Hello everyone from Frank. Here we are again with uh, another Commodore 64 uh, that has to be repaired. This is not uh, uh, just uh, one Commodore 64, this is actually the most important uh, Commodore 64 in the world, at least to me, because this is uh, the original Commodore 64 that um, was my computer. Uh, from uh, some sometimes in 1984 and uh, it was my only computer from uh, 1984 to 1992 um, for sure then uh, I used this one a few times uh, um, until probably 1995 or 1996 maybe um, when I returned home from uh, the university, which was in another uh, town, and until I got uh, two PCs, or one for my parents' home and one uh, from my university uh, house, uh, this was my only computer in uh, the parents' house to connect uh, with uh, terminal emulation to internet and something like that at the time and it has been in storage from uh, well actually 20 years or something and it doesn't work now let's power on completely black screen not even a bump on the video that probably point uh, the finger to the clock generation or um, the big, big chip so let's open it this is the probably the third board revision of the Commodore 64 it's not uh, the one with uh, the um, uh, the old clock generation circuit which had many many chips and uh, later in the years I acquired uh, uh, from the friends uh, and, and dollars uh, uh, quite a few other revisions of uh, the Commodore 64 I only miss the, the original silver label one and uh, the very last uh, C64C revision uh, but uh, when one day maybe I find them or uh, who cares <laughs> um, okay so let's power on and check on this pin the clock generation there is nothing Oops. Hmm. I just shorted two pins but it was dead there is nothing on this uh, pin so I'm sure this 8701 is dead so I have a last one replacement for this one okay replace the, the 8701 at this point uh, this is a 1986 vintage chip and let's see what happens You see the difference it made a bump because the synchronism is now coming to the monitor um, but we have a black screen so something else is broken inside this uh, c64 just for the record let's see what we have on the chip on the pin that we propped uh, before on the dead 8701 and we have a clock signal I'm also working on a replacement for uh, the 8701 chip with the modern uh, um, surface mount clock chips but I have to experiment uh, a little bit more to come up with a valid solution for, for the for replacement of the 8701 
because the original is not going to be available forever. If you have seen uh, my other uh, repair to with the Executive 64, I replaced the dual ROM option with uh, only the speed DOS kernel with an adapter. Um, to check maybe if the original kernel ROM is bad. And uh, we don't have a good result. So um, I either start uh, replacing chip maybe the 6569 or yeah I will make a uh, try with the with the big chip then I'll start scoping uh, the bus, data bus and address bus looking uh, for problems because it may be not so easy like swapping a chip here it is another C64 motherboard that uh, I found some times ago in the dumpster and the case was too badly damaged to be salvaged but I managed to um, re repair the board that has, uh, that had a few quite a few faults and I used this with, for uh, testing uh, the chips uh, the suspect chips. Uh, I prefer testing the chips on a mm, on a good uh, motherboard uh, to avoid uh, not identifying uh, multiple faults. So I transplanted the the big chip and the PLA of my bad uh, 64, and this one works. So I can be sure that uh, both the VIC and the PLA are good, so uh, they are going back where they belong. Whooping the chips uh, did not produce any uh, results so far. I left only the kernel ROM in place, because uh, with the kernel we should at least see the screen color changing if something works. And we still have a black screen. We so far excluded the big chip and PLA. I couldn't test the CPU because I have no a socket on the other motherboard. Um, I just tested uh, this chip because it was socketed also on the other motherboard and it works. This is a, a demultiplexer. Uh, no, it's a multiplexer for the address bus uh, to the RAMs, and this one works. Okay, looking around with the current probe, I found uh, pin 12 of U25 to it's getting a large current or sourcing. Um, actually, it is an output, so probably. It's trying to drive a short, shorted line, but anyway, it's getting very large current, and this is an output. So let's check the schematic. Here we are, at pin 12, the one with uh, the large current, and it is driving, uh, and it is an output as a. As I told, and it is drawing the pin 5 of all the RAMs. Okay, let's do some more tests with uh, the current probe. I looked at the schematic a bit better, and uh, you see also the pin 9 is getting, uh, which is another output, a large current. This is the twin chip and has no big current on any, on any pin. So we have large current on pin 9 and 12 and those pins are driving uh, as you can see pin uh, 5 and 7 of the rams but um, i haven't been able to find a large current on uh, any 5 or 7 of the rams uh, 
okay as you can see I press uh, 0 and 1 of the RAM are also driven from the weak chip uh, of course not uh, they are not supposed to be driving at the same time as the, uh, the CPU which is using the U25 to the multi the, to multiplex the addresses while on the weak chip they have the same pin and uh, because uh, the weak chip also generates the road address and uh, column address selects so the weak chip knows when to use the different addresses on the same pin so the large current is uh, on the U25 and uh, not on the RAMs so we should verify that we have also the large current on to pin 25 and 20, 24 and 25 of the weak chip so let's verify what happens on so pin 23, 24 yes large current 25 also and normal on the other pins so let's power down probably yes getting hot so big chip is conflicting between the, with the u25 on driving the same line at the same time probably and um, i think u25 is bad um, I'll verify in the schematic, but I believe that these two pins are driven but they say by the same enable signal. So if this one works and does the correct signal, this one should work too. Um, the enable signal is generated by this one. So let's have a look in the schematic just to check. Okay, output enable of U13 and uh, U25 It's coming from uh, T7406 and U8, like uh, I remember it So if it works for U13, it must work also for U25 So I will remove all uh, U25 and see if my luck So um, replace the remove the old chip in U25 position, put a socket on it, and um, a replacement. And the situation is this, which makes sense because I'm still left out the basic and character generation ROMs, so let's put. Uh, them back and see what happens. Okay, the chips are back, including uh, the dual ROM option. And uh, this is the situation with the original kernel, C64 kernel. This is a most likely a RAM error, but let's try again with the speed DOS version uh, if. Uh, something changes maybe this is the situation with the speed dos and you see there there is the wrong uh, bytes free number so maybe yeah almost surely some of the ram chips are bad and let's try to identify the wrong ones one of the techniques when uh, there is an out of memory or wrong uh, bytes free count is to try to piggyback uh, the RAM chips with another one uh, of course that you know it's good um, so put it on top of uh, one of the, the other chips and see if something changes so of course avoiding to make uh, shorts between the pins so that should be made uh, very carefully and this one uh, is not changing anything so I will try one by one all the chips and see if something changes 
um, no piggybacking of chips uh, gave me any hint about the uh, wrong uh, from chip if any I wrote this small basic program and uh, uh, just writing zero on some RAM location then reading back and printing uh, where it's not reading zero and it seems always uh, the bit 3 the d3 line uh, goes high some somewhere in, uh, in some locations and bit 3 from the schematic uh, should be u10 this one so uh, may give it a uh, a try and substituting in, substituting this uh, U10, U10 and see what happens. Okay, now um, I've replaced the U10, which was the D3 uh, drum chip, and it seems uh, it was uh, indeed uh, the problem. So it was. It was uh, not uh, not uh, easy to um, to to spot the problem with um, piggybacking a good chip, but it was indeed bad. So um, using the small uh, basic program did the trick. So far, so good. Now. I'll try to load the, the usual test program and see if everything looks good. Well, it looks okay so far. And uh, the kernel will fail because I'm uh, using the speed DOS in this, time, in this moment. Um, but it looks okay, so I think this one is uh, good again. Okay, maybe I'll play a bit. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I didn't win, uh, but there still are my, my old records uh, <laughs> from 20 or more years ago. Bye bye.